Uh, Wombat in the top hat says, I jumped right into a five inch drone. How much of a mistake was that? Well, that depends on how much sim experience you have. Maybe no mistake. If you're solid in the sim, you go right to a five inch. You need to respect the fact that it can injure you and you need to learn and follow safe protocols for handling of the drone. Um, like if you had a 65 millimeter whoop, like, oh, what's the worst that's going to happen if you throttle up and, you know, it's like going to get tangled in your hair. It's not going to hurt you. So, like, if you got sloppy with a 65 millimeter whoop and you, like, armed it and then you picked it up or you, like, didn't unplug the battery immediately after picking it up or you, like, you set your controller down and you were fussing with it, you plugged it in and somebody could hit the arm switch, who really cares? 65 millimeter isn't going to hurt you, really. With a 5-inch, you got to treat that thing like a dangerous machine that can hurt you seriously because it is. So, like, you would want to respect... You wouldn't want to, like, do 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 Oh, hang on. I got to look and see if the receiver's bound. And you're, like, holding it up to your face with a freaking battery plugged in and the props on. You know, you don't be a dumbass. You know, people... I say that, but, like, people injure themselves on five inches all the time. So, clearly, not everybody has... You know, you need to... Common sense isn't enough. You need training and procedures and protocols. So... But the question okay. is, do you know how to fly? Yeah, Blinty. Is it time for the discussion? Uh, you released a new drone, right? You released mm -hmm. a new kit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not five inch. It's a three. It's a three inch. Okay. Now the question is, is that for specifically to catch sub two fifty? Yep. Or is that because you think nope. people should be building a three inch? Nope. That's the question. It's it's, it's a one thousand percent. Because for, I, gosh, I don't know why. Can't, can't imagine why there's a sudden uptick in interest in sub-250 drones for, for regulatory okay. reasons. I'm being sarcastic. So um, GetFPV was like, hey, a lot of people want to buy a sub-250 drone. Do you want to do a sub-250 build kit? And I was like, sure. Um, like, you could make an argument that a 3-inch is better for a beginner than a 5-inch. A 3-inch is potentially going to be more durable in a crash because it's lighter, although not necessarily because in order to get the weight down below, like a sub two, a, a three inch with no weight limit is going to be more durable than a five inch. But a sub 253 inch, you do make some compromises. Like we had to use 1404 motors. We would have liked to use bigger motors and bigger motors would have been more durable probably, but we had to get under 250 grams and using smaller motors was how to do that. So a sub-253 inch isn't necessarily even more durable than a 5 inch. It's a little bit safer because the props are smaller and less powerful. But no, I, I would say that a beginner who puts in the time in the simulator to become sufficiently competent at flying can go straight to a 5 inch. They just need to make sure they think and study and maybe even watch a Bardwell video about how to be safe uh, with it so they don't like chop their face up. So then extrapolating from this... Are you suggesting that? So the question I've had for a long time, right, and as someone who flies 5-inch, 3-inch, 2-inch, and mm -hmm. toothpicks and, you know, everything, mm -hmm. is do you think that 5-inch is just superior? We found the right prop size early. It's good. We did it. And that's what's going to be the 5-inch that feels the right way to fly an FPV drone? Or as technology has progressed, do you think we're in a world where 3-inch feels good enough that, like, if we had done this five years ago, 70 yeah. or whatever, you know, whenever 5-inch hit the scene, that, like, do you really a, think that 5-inch would yeah. be the thing? So that's a tough one. That's a tough one. Like, because you can't sort of unwind history. And, and we ended up on 5-inch because 5-inch turned out to be the sweet spot for sort of power, durability, cost. There were all these factors that went into play, and 5 inches turned out to be the sweet spot. And that decision was made before you know we got to the point where we're at now with technology. Like It used to be that the smaller motors were really just underpowered. You didn't get a lot of speed, agility, performance. Um, and, and so now you can build a 3-inch, or I think 3.5-inch is really like a sweet spot. You can build a three and a half inch that flies just as good as a five inch, does all the acrobatic tricks. Frankly, if you want it to, it can be as fast as a five inch. Um, you can really tick all the boxes you tick with a five inch with a three and a half inch. It's not going to be identical in the way it flies, but it will be able to sort of scratch that itch in almost every way, maybe every way. Um, 
And so then the question would be, well, why didn't we settle on three and a half inch instead of five inch? And the answer is largely because if you go back five years, well, even longer, because it's been a long time. If you go back eight years, seven, 10 years to the, when these sort of decisions were being made, three and a half inches, the, the mo- they just didn't have very powerful three inch motors, three and a half inch motors, you know, the, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I do think five inches is a sweet spot. You know, as you think about the prop size, the prop size is largely proportional to the weight that you want to carry the weight of the drone itself, and then a camera and so forth. And when you look at the typical weight that a five inch comes out at, you know, uh, five inches is the sweet spot for that weight. And so we've got this sort of synergy here where we build a drone that has a sufficient amount of durability. We pick the motors that are gonna give us a sufficient amount of power and all of these curves kind of come together and it turns out a five inch prop is just about right for that. Um, you go up to a bigger drone and like even uh, like say a seven inch, like there's not that much difference between a five inch and a six inch. But I think if you go in like two inch increments from a five inch to a seven inch, there's a big difference. Even if you were to try to build the similar weight, the size of motor and the responsiveness of the prop of a seven inch immediately has different handling characteristics in terms of the responsiveness to inputs and the stability in the air. A seven inch just feels very very different than a five inch in terms of its floatiness and its willingness to descend in terms of flight time and battery that you need to power a seven inch is immediately bigger and heavier. So you just immediately are in a different regime. And the same when you go from five inches down to three inches. Again, I think two inch increments are really like the difference between a five inch and a four inch is kind of subtle, but a five inch and a three inch again is, is very, very distinct. And then I think once you get below three inches, three inches, two inches, 1.6 inches, you know, now, now we, we're, we're down, those, those gradations have gotten a lot closer and are a lot more distinct. Um, and it just Bad seems like five inches is a sweet spot. Bad for Life in the chat suggests that maybe it was pushed by GoPros. People wanted to carry things like GoPros as weight. Valid, valid. And so maybe the digital revolution has also changed that for people, right? Where we've now got, I, I don't know. you know, good cameras and DVR instead of a GoPro that we're carrying. So the goal weight is lower. You know, the, the you know, if you want to add a GoPro, you have to get bigger, right? Absolutely. That's sort of the idea. Like, it's really hard to have good flight characteristics if you're carrying a GoPro on anything smaller than a 5-inch. Unless you start doing naked GoPro or something. Um, I do think that uh, cameras like the O4, like really, even like the the good FPV cameras, like the DJI, v, you know, the Vista system. Though the DVR from the Vista was not cinematic by any means, but it was good enough, especially compared to analog, that a lot of people were just like, screw it. If I'm not publishing this, you know, if I'm not trying to make like a, a Johnny FPV cinematic masterpiece, I'm just going to run my, I'm going to leave my GoPro off. And now we've got cameras like the O3, like the Moonlight, even, which give you. Maybe not quite GoPro quality, but good, close enough as you're like, ah, do I really want to put a $200 GoPro on this thing? The thing is, and so with that, builds like a three inch build have become more viable, right? Because now we can get good quality HD footage, more than good enough for posting on YouTube, maybe even good enough for professional use off of a, a quadcopter without a GoPro. But like on a five inch, I would still rather have a five inch weighing in at 650 grams with no GoPro or maybe even 600 grams than a five inch with a GoPro weighing 750 or 800 grams, however that math works out. Like I would still prefer a five inch and just because, because like a 650 gram five inch is a blast to fly and a 750 or 800 gram five inch is still fun to fly, but boy, a 650 gram is woof, 700 gram woof, you know. And, and likewise, on a 3-inch, if you've got a 3-inch with a DJI 04 in it, that's that's a little chunky for a 3-inch, but it'll do, right? So, yeah. And then the other thing I have to acknowledge is, like, there's people out there who fly 65 millimeter, 75 millimeter, and that's just their jam. And they don't want to fly a 5-inch. They think that 65 is the sweet spot. And so we have to acknowledge that you know, there every size has its advantages and its proponents and its adherents, but um, five inch really seems to be where you have as much power, speed, and agility as you could possibly want for most applications, and the durability is pretty good, and like 
and then you start going down to three inch or even smaller and now you're making some compromises like i think below three inch you really feel the changes in the handling in the power in the floatiness in the in the responsiveness and then above say five and a half inches you really feel the difference in terms of the stability and the floatiness and and there's just like this spot where it really seems like like 3.5 to 5 inches is just which is really good so i don't know it's hard to say whether that's objective or whether that's just what i'm used to though good question thank you plenty